Hello, 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 and welcome to VB in Conversation. I'm joined today by Caesar Sengupta, co-founder and CEO of Arta Finance. Caesar, welcome. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks for having me on, and uh, hello uh, to everyone. Uh, Caesar, tell us a little bit about yourself and you know why we're talking to you today. Tom, um, I am the one of the co-founders and the CEO of Arta Finance. Uh, we're trying to democratize private banking. If you think about it, the ultra rich have always had these financial superpowers that you know the rest of us can only admire and maybe know a little bit about. If someone has a hundred thousand dollars, they know kind of what to do. You know, they should not be holding debt. They should be taking advantage of any government programs, depending on what country they're in, retirement programs, four hundred one k, all that kind of stuff. But if you're in the middle, you really don't have many things helping you today. So at Arta, we are trying to use technology and specifically AI to bring them to millions more people around the world. And, you know, we want to wrap all of this together into a very easy solution that we are calling a digital family office. The ultra wealthy have their teams of people they call their family family offices. We want everyone to have a AI and a technology-powered digital family office. And we decided to do it straight out of Singapore because if you want to serve a global market, I mean, and you have to be based in one city, this is an excellent place to be. And uh, so, so what brought you to uh, to Arta? You you co-founded it. Where what what were you doing before? So right before Arta, I was leading all fintech efforts at Google. So Google Pay, Google Finance, um, the payments platform, um, basically anything to do with uh, money movement or payments um, uh, around that. And um, you know, this Arta came about because it was this was a problem that my co-founders and I actually faced in our own lives. What made you choose? Uh, Singapore over, you know, other similar ecosystems like Silicon Valley, for instance. So when uh, Google and Alphabet's current CEO, Sundar, became CEO, one of the things he wanted us to do was uh, tap into the new innovations that were coming out from a very mobile first population and from a young sort of dynamic population like the population in Asia. And so he asked me to move back and start a new business unit called the Next Million Users and when we looked, Singapore was the best place for us to set up that entire effort from. Uh, because, you know, if you put Singapore in the center and you draw a six-hour flying circle, guess what? There are more people who are inside the circle than outside. And of course, Singapore government and the Singapore ecosystem has been very friendly to businesses, particularly tech businesses. Um, and they helped us a lot, helped Google a lot in getting set up, getting growing, connected us to the local community incredibly well. So when it came time to start Arda, for me, it was like, well, this has worked so well for Google Pay, for Google, we should do the same again for Arda. And, uh, you know, it's proven true. The community here has been fantastic. Sort of the networks that we've formed has helped us tap in, get the right insights, get going, get the funding going. And increasingly over the years, uh, the center of Asian financial uh, gravity has moved from Hong Kong to Singapore. And then in parallel, there was a tech ecosystem that was getting built up here, right, over the last, you know, nine, 10 years. And again, a very explicit um, approach and strategy by the government and the Economic Development Board to build up both sectors. And the fact that these both sectors were together in a place that is half the size of the Silicon Valley uh, meant that it was a fertile ground for that intersection to happen. And you know, when you combine on top of that uh, a, a regulator, that is, um, I mean, obviously responsible, but incredibly smart, incredibly forward thinking and understands technology. That's like a beautiful fertile ground for fintech to prosper. And uh, honestly, now over the last few five, six years, we found an incredible ecosystem of founders, a technologist that has built up here. So it's been actually great to get going um, in Singapore and start with serving the American market and Asia, then, you know, the rest of the world. How easy has it been to actually hire and even retain talent in Singapore? So in from the local uh, uh, economy, from the local environment, um, especially in key functions like uh, software engineering, product development, that sort of thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's actually building a team here has not been in trouble. Engineering team, we have a pretty extensive engineering team here. We have about 35 people in Singapore. It's been It's been... And we've got very high quality people who've left like a number of other big tech companies and come over. Every big tech has engineering offices here. And that's not just big techs from the US. It's also big techs from China and from India, right? And so the concentration of tech talent here 
that is obviously many are Singaporean, many are Singapore trained, and many are from the region who've chosen Singapore to be a home has actually increased dramatically. And uh, I would say at this point, maybe outside, um, you know, a couple of areas in the Bay Area, Singapore is probably one of the best places to build a tech company. That's a, I think that's a really good segue into uh, you know, companies are built on families. And if you're moving to a new location, moving to a new country, which is even even scarier for many, how the the impact on on families and you know your family and your your co, you know your your uh, various uh, employees families that have moved there how easy was it for them i mean it's a big emotional shift i've seen this with my co-founders so a bunch of my co-founders our team actually moved initially at google with me for the next billion user team uh this was around 2014 2015 and interestingly, most said, you know, we'll come for a couple of years. It'll be a fun, exciting time in Asia. We get to explore, explore Asia. It's 2013, getting on 2023, getting on 2024. They're still here. And, you know, I don't think they're going anywhere else. And that tells you something. And it's part of, it's the quality of life. It's very easy to get going. You know, everything works. It's super well connected to the rest of the world. So in a way, it's sort of this you know, beautiful mix of an urban city with a with very high quality of life. So I think those things really matter. Like Singapore throughout has focused on, you know, really enabling you to be business focused and and sort of making sure like your family and everybody else uh, overall is is actually incredibly happy. What is your favorite part of Singapore? What's the part that you know when you think of what well, you're, you're now home? When you think of you know you're the uh, headquarters of your of, of Arts of Finance. What is your favorite part of Singapore, uh, business and or, or personal? I would say from a business point of view, it's really the communities and the networks. EDB has introduced us to other entrepreneurs, um, other founders, these networks of technologists where, yeah, where honestly the, the knowledge and the information sharing and having access to that network and that community has been incredibly valuable. So, you know, the, as you said, like Silicon Valley has a phenomenal network. I can now see a similar network of, you know, American founders, Chinese founders, Indian founders, Southeast Asian founders in in Singapore. And that 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 I find incredibly valuable um, as somebody building a company. Uh, on a personal side, I've got to say it's got to be the food. The food in Singapore is just incredible, right? And in the intersections between the cuisines, like you'll find a French chef who lived in Japan for a while and now cooks. And it's, you know, it's affordable um, and it's it's just incredible. You'll see some incredible types of uh, cuisines here. I'm going to close now with the last question. Is there a habit, a practice, a learning from your professional life that you've kind of carried over to your personal life? Uh, that you've either, yeah, and if you can put a Singaporean twist on it as well, then even better. But you know, what's what's the thing that you do professionally that you've has influenced your personal life? Um, I don't know which way it started, but I think one of the things that is incredibly important in life is to be grateful and explicitly grateful to people around you. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, we we tend to be a lot more. Um, formal about this at work, uh, but it's incredibly important at a, in your personal lives too, right? So people know that, you know, that you are actually, you, you incredibly value having them in your lives. Um, and um, one of the things we've, you know, so we, I've tried to do that as much as possible at home. And one of the rituals that um, we've, we're very excited about in Arta is this ritual we've come up with called kudos. So at the end of our all hands every week, people give kudos to each other. And it's not a it's not a gift or anything. It's just a thank you for ha having helped me figure out this particular code change. Or, you know, I was stuck at this place and so-and-so really helped me. And we do that openly. We do that publicly. We do that generously. And that's really helped us build um, a culture that, you know, we f where we feel appreciated, you know. Um, and uh, that that's something that I wish... You know, part of me, I want to do that a lot more in my life. I really like that. It's the, it's the small things that can make such a big difference, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Caesar. I really appreciate your time today. Absolutely fascinating insight into not only art of finance, but, but how you've set up in Singapore and the advantages it brings. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Tom, and to the entire VentureBeat crew. Thank you. 
And thank you for watching. Visit Singapore EDB online to learn more. And for more stories about the tech revolution, subscribe to our newsletter and check out our other VB in conversation videos at venturebeat.com.